For more on last night's debate, we turn now to Kevin Hassett. He is a senior fellow and director of economic policy studies at the American Enterprise Institute. Kevin joins us from Washington. So, uh, Kevin, what do you think, first of all, why don't we start off with 999? I mean, it sure got a lot of play last night. And I think uh, he made a very good point in that his plan is the only one that doesn't pivot off the tax code that everybody um, has such huge problems with, that everyone says is broken, that everybody says is incredibly flawed and complex. Does it, does it bother you that everybody else is, 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 is still working off the old tax code? He thinks it should be completely thrown away and we should start over. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the first thing I got to say is, wow, what a debate. I mean, that thing was just full of substance. And I thought it was interesting that everybody was going after Herman Cain instead of Mitt Romney as if Herman Cain were, were the front runner. And it could be because his idea, the 999 plan, is really getting some traction with voters. And that's why he's going up in the polls. You know, the 999 plan is basically something like the flat tax or, or uh, uh, the fair tax. It's a little bit different, but it's more or less the same thing. So it should be right in the sweet spot of Republican ideology. And for Republicans to be a attacking it, I think it's, well, it really puts them in an awkward position, and we saw that last night. And so I thought that Herman Cain was one of the winners last night, if just because it showed that he was a front runner, that everybody was attacking him. You know, I mean, clearly no Republican has a problem with 9%, with a flat 9% income tax rate. A 9% corporate tax rate probably doesn't bother anybody. It's the sales tax that people see as a, as a VAT, and as Michelle Bachman put it, another pipeline of revenue for Congress that's the issue, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what they say, but the argument is idiotic, really. I mean, I mean, the, a national consumption tax would be the most efficient tax. That's what the, the flat tax is, really, is a, is a, a consumption tax in another guise. And, and the, the sales tax is something that we see at, at the state level, and, and the states, you know, have their governments under control. And so I think it's Bachman's position that you should have an inefficient tax code uh, so that government doesn't grow. Well, guess what? We've got an inefficient tax code, and government's growing like crazy. And so I just don't see that argument at all. I don't think that's a good argument against what he's proposing. You know, Herman Cain put a question about uh, inefficiency, or at least about a complexity, to Mitt Romney uh, because he thinks Romney's plan is too complex. Listen to uh, Romney's response to Herman Cain. Herman, I've, I've had the experience in my life of take on, taking on some tough problems. And, and I must admit that, that uh, simple answers are, are always very helpful, but oftentimes inadequate. So, so what do you think about that? I mean, he says complexity is necessary here. These are serious and difficult issues to deal with. Yeah, I think that that's the key moment in the debate because uh, Herman took on Romney and then Romney came back and said, well, simple answers aren't always the right answers. But, you know, simple answers sometimes are what voters want to hear. And so uh, I'm not sure whether Romney or Kane won, but I think we'll see if we watch the polls in the next few days. Does Romney do himself a disservice, or does he does he create problems in uh, giving voters the message that he is uh, more into these kind of complexities, bigger government, you know, deeper into the red tape bureaucracy? Yeah, I think that that's right. I mean, that he could look like a smarty pants with really complicated ideas. And so I'm not sure that he's going to uh, come out ahead on that. But on the other hand, his plan is a pretty solid one. And so maybe that's uh, what voters will take away. You know, anybody, I think it's a tough call, but I think that they both were winners on that exchange. Did anybody else stand out? I mean, if you think uh, Romney and Kane were the winners of last night's debate, did anybody else stand, uh, stand out to you? Yeah, I think that Rick Perry was a big loser. You know, in fact, he could be the, the worst debater I've ever seen. If it was a fight, then somebody would probably have stopped it. He gets up there and he gets frozen and confused. And, you know, I hear he's great on the stump. I, I hear that people that go to his events, his town hall meetings, love him. But I've just never seen a worse debater. And if he's plummeting in the polls still at the end of this week, it's because he's not done anything in the debates to make us feel like he's a guy who's a legitimate candidate. So I, I thought Perry was the big loser last night. Maybe Texans, when they move to the national stage, have a bit of an issue, although I think Richard Fisher might do a pretty good job. Let me let me ask yes. you about uh, something completely different, although it's been the talk of Washington. For some reason, some people think maybe misplaced here on Wall Street, the Occupy Wall Street movement. It's been compared to the Tea Party a lot as well at, at its beginnings. What do you think about Occupy Wall Street? I think it is a little bit like the Tea Party in the sense that the whole uh, uh, economy is, is disappointing and voters are, are looking for answers and they're not getting them from politicians and so they're just getting angry. And when people are taking to the streets, guess what? That's not a good, good thing for people in power. And, and uh, people on the left are doing it, people on the right are doing it. And I think that's why right now President uh, Obama's approval is looking like Jimmy Carter level almost. And, and so, yeah, I think that there's a serious problem out there uh, that people on the left and the right all recognize that we're going in the wrong direction. 
direction. I know they want to take us in a different direction, in a different way going forward, but that unrest, I think, is really, really bad for Democrats going into next year. Well, and congressional approval ratings as well, lower than even journalists and used car salesmen. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs>